Welcome back to an introduction to LearnDash. In the last video, we learned how to create courses, how to use the short code editor on the edit screen, and how to use the course builder within LearnDash. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at lessons. So if we go to the WordPress dashboard and click on LearnDash LMS lessons, you'll see that we have two lessons pre-populated. That's thanks to the Learn Dash course builder. First, let's take a look at the tabs across the top of the screen. You'll see these options are very similar to what we saw in the course options. We have Learn Dash categories and tags, and we have WordPress post categories and tags, which are unchecked. We also have the ability to exclude lessons from search. We're going to do that here because the idea is that our courses are locked down. So we don't want people who are not logged in looking at our lessons. This does mean that current students can't use the default search functionality to find lessons or topics. But the assumption is that once they register for a course, they'll use the course content table to find that information. This is totally up to you whether you want to exclude or include lessons and topics from search. It's also worth noting that the content itself will not show up if a student is not enrolled in the course or if the course isn't marked as open or free. We also have tabs for lesson categories and tags. If we go back to the lessons tab, we can click on one of our lessons to start editing it. You'll see that we already have a title and a permalink. And one important thing to note here is that our permalink is generic for the lesson. That's because we turned on the ability to reuse lessons and topics across multiple courses. Let's go ahead and add some content here. We don't need too much content here since we're breaking this lesson down into smaller topics. If we scroll down, we'll see the lesson options here. We've got lesson materials, which much like course materials is related or supplementary stuff. We can also force a lesson timer, which means that users need to spend a certain amount of time on this lesson before marking it complete. This is great if the user is supposed to read a full amount of text, watch a video, or perform an activity before moving on. They'll also have the ability to upload assignments. If we check this, we'll have a bunch of different options for assignments, like if we can auto approve it or allow the user to move on just for uploading an assignment. We can limit the number of uploaded files, allow students to delete their own assignments, award points, allow certain extensions and sizes, and more. We can also make this lesson a sample lesson which means that even if the course is closed or paid for, potential students or visitors can still view this lesson for free. The last three options here give us fine-grained control over how students consume our lessons and topics. Make lesson visible X days after signup and make lesson visible on specific date both allow us to drip out our course over a certain amount of time. If you have an open enrollment for your course, which means that students can sign up at any time for it, you might want to use Make Lesson Visible X Days After Sign Up. This simply says that a student can view this lesson some amount of time after they've signed up for the course. So if you want your students to take one lesson per week, the first lesson will be made available immediately. The second lesson will be made available seven days after they sign up. The third lesson will be made available 14 days after they sign up, and so on. If you have a closed enrollment, meaning that students can only sign up for a course within a small window of time, then you can use the Make Lesson Visible on Specific Date. So. If enrollment closes on April 30th and you want them to start on May 1st, you can make the lesson visible on May 1st of that year. 
This will allow all of your students to consume the content at the same time. And again, it controls the fact that they can't just do the entire course in one day if they're not supposed to do that. We'll take a closer look at enable video progression in the topics video. One more thing before we view this lesson on the front end. You'll notice the associated content box that we saw on the courses page, but we don't see any associated information. Again, this is because our lessons are reusable from course to course. In order to see where this lesson falls in a specific course, we can use the course switcher to see the full outline or associated content for that course. When we select our course, Creating Your Own Podcast, the associated content shows up, and you'll also see that the permalink has changed. But nothing else is affected for our lesson. So we will click update. And now that we are on this specific lesson for the course, we can click view post. And we have the lesson topics the text, and the ability to mark a lesson complete. You will see that there are two things that are missing, however, and that is the course progress and an easy way to get back to the beginning of the course. There are a few ways that we can do that in the template, but we can also use short codes if we want to display course progress right on this page. So to do that, we'll go to Edit Lesson, and underneath our content, we'll add the course progress shortcode. You'll see that we need an ID for the course progress. So what we'll do is we will go to the courses page and we can click on the course we're looking for. In the URL, you'll see post equals 108. 108 is the ID that we're looking for here. Now we'll click update and view the post again. Now there is a gray bar that appears, allowing us to see what kind of progress we are making on the course. Since we haven't marked anything complete, this is a completely gray bar. As we start to mark lessons and topics complete, we'll see this fill in. One more note about the theme. We are using the default WordPress theme here, which at the time of this recording is 2017. If you want more fine-grained control, a different theme, or something that integrates differently with LearnDash, you can certainly do that. There are a lot of great themes out there that work well with LearnDash. So that's it for this lesson. In it, we learned how to add content to our lessons. We learned about dripping out our content, and we learned about the theme that we're using. In the next video, we're going to take a look at topics and video progression.